Hello and welcome back to Grim Survival. Today is October 31st, 2019. I know that because it's a holiday that I don't celebrate, but hey, we're not talking about that today. Today we're going to talk about bad weather, how weather can kill you, more specifically hypothermia and it, yeah, things like that. And I, as I'm sure you know, hypothermia can kill you. Between 2003 and 2013, it killed 13,400 people. I wrote notes down. That's why I know this. I looked it up beforehand. Um, as I'm sure you know, your body is typically 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is roughly 37 degrees Celsius, roughly. Um, so, hypothermia symptoms is, you know, I'm going to give you the, the basic symptoms, not the extreme symptoms. And obviously, uh, one of the premier symptoms is loss of motor control. You'll start shivering uncontrollably. It'll, you'll get hard to, it'll be hard to think. You'll kind of like now, it'll be hard to concentrate. It'll be, you know, you just, you won't be able to focus on anything. You won't be able to concentrate. You, you won't be able to, you know, do basic tasks. It, it'll be, become very difficult for you to do pretty much anything. And yeah, uh, if you can't see it back here, the contrast, it is snowing. Today, so far, I have driven through rain, sleet, and snow. And yeah, that's why this video came to be because, yeah, um, there are several, several ways to get hypothermia. The most premier way is to be cold, 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 cold. Basically what it is is when your body has not the ability to increase its temperature because something externally is preventing it. Uh, usually it's when you're wet in cold weather or you fall into a frozen lake or, you know, I'm sure you, you can Google it. You'll know. Anyway, uh, that's why I'm making it because really wet snow was, it was rain it, now it's wet snow uh, and there was sleet in there somewhere. I don't know what that sound is if you can hear it. Um, but yeah, that's why I'm making the video because I drive through conditions like this all the time. Vehicles. We're going to talk about why you shouldn't be in your vehicle in bad situations. And we'll just go over that real quick, as quick as I can. This, this video might run a little long. Um, you should not shelter in your vehicle in any kind of extreme weather if it is broken down or you're stranded. There are several bad things that can happen to you in a stranded vehicle. People have died because they stayed in their vehicle when they should not have. Uh, so that being said, trucks are a little bit different. In this particular, trucks are diesel engines. Diesel engines operate differently than gas engines, obviously. So the truck I'm sitting in has approximately 100 gallons of fuel in it. I always fuel it up on the way to Chicago so that I make sure I always have enough fuel to last the day or at least get me back or sit here overnight if I have to in an idling vehicle. Uh, diesel engines idle longer. They they work better they keep things warmer uh, your air conditioner in the summer will run a lot longer and cooler in a diesel in diesel vehicle than it will in a standard gas powered car i'm not a mechanic i don't know the mechanics of it i don't know why that is but it, look it up if you want uh, like i said this vehicle has about 100 gallons of fuel in it it's a diesel engine the, the heater will stay warm it won't stay as warm as if you know if i'm driving but it'll stay warm enough that i don't need a jacket and i can sit here with the thing off for quite a long time afterwards which i'm doing now um but yeah the the heater will keep blowing heat even at idle and your car will will but n not nearly like this so yeah uh, bad things that can happen to you obviously in a vehicle like a gas powered car is if you have snow piling up outside the snow can actually cover your exhaust which will create exhaust uh, it'll make your exhaust come into your vehicle. It blocks your exhaust so it's not going out, it's staying in. It eventually comes into the vehicle and you'll suffocate to death. So what would you rather do, freeze or suffocate? Eh, take a pick. But getting out of your vehicle is the most important thing you could possibly do. If it's stranded, don't stay. Um, of course, if it's pouring down rain and it's 38 degrees outside, yeah, if you don't have proper rain protection or a way to keep yourself dry, then that's not a good idea. You should probably wait until it stops raining if you can keep yourself warm. But, I mean, there's variables on all of this. Sometimes it might be a better idea to stay in your car, but the majority of the time, that's going to kill you. Majority of the time, yeah. So keep that in mind if you ever are stranded. Quick story, I have been stranded in a truck like this one, not for this company, that broke down and wouldn't start. So I had no ability to idle the truck. I couldn't keep it warm. Uh, I don't remember exactly what interstate or state I was in, but it was cold outside. It wasn't exactly below freezing, but it was definitely in the 30s. And I, of course, always have, you know, proper clothing with me. And we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, I ran, I got out of the vehicle. I went up the hill on the side of the interstate and I 
uh, started the fire. There was a little wooded area. There was actually an old tire rim sitting there and I started the fire in the old tire rim and I sat by the fire until the tow truck came and got me and the vehicle and towed us both away. So yeah, several ways you can fix hypothermia if you come across somebody with it and obviously they have the heating pads uh, but you shouldn't pour put direct heat on skin if it's that cold because you could really damage the skin and actually by creating you can create an irregular heartbeat by warming someone up too fast so as you've seen in the movie skin to skin how they get naked and cuddle under a blanket that is actually true you can do that and if it's not so severe hypothermia that will work but don't put somebody in a hot shower or something like that that will probably kill them um uh, hot water bottles are a good thing if you have a bottle of water you can heat it up you can have them put it under each armpit uh, you can have them hold one in their hand but don't you know don't pour hot water on a person there are several other ways to you know help with hypothermia and drinking warm water would be good not hot water warm water avoid caffeine caffeine makes your heart rate go up uh, and that could actually yeah cold blood running through your system not a good thing so uh, quickly I'm gonna tell you what I carry okay uh, for winter um, I'm gonna try to do it quickly first and foremost I always have these these are always in my truck yeah I use them for fueling I use them for everything that's why they look like this this is a uh, insulated glove and they're just you can get these at any hardware store these are the cheap ones they really are but they work really well they're insulated they're leather lined which makes them water resistant the top of it still gets a little wet but my hands stay 90 percent dry in this glove as you know i'm out playing in the snow so gloves that's a key i always carry i'm going to show you my underwear i always carry thermal underwear with me that's the Russell brand. I think I got these at Costco, possibly Walmart. These are rated for zero degrees. I carry them in my backpack if I'm not wearing them. If it gets cold enough outside, I'll, I'll just wear them to work. So yeah, I always keep that in the backpack. And speaking of backpack, I have a 511 Rush 72. I call it my 200 mile bag. It's basically a get home bag. It will get me home if I have to walk out of Chicago all the way back to the southern parts of Indiana. Well, south of Indianapolis. It's approximately about 250 miles. So yeah. Yeah, from my route has changed lately, so I'm you know, at the farthest distance, about 250 miles away from my home, and that's not good at all. I don't like it, and uh, yeah, trying to change jobs is a key. I always carry this, and this is my oh sh it kit. Yeah, th there's a pause there, so I didn't say it, but that's what this is. There's an emergency blanket in here. There's emergency fire starters in here. There are you know a big lighter in here always have a way to start a fire always always have a way to keep yourself dry um, I got stuff just thrown around over here even in the winter time I've used this today it's been raining this is my rain jacket it's kind of wet um, Swiss well I got this from Amazon I think I paid 15 bucks it came with the pants so I have a rain jacket and rain pants I don't like ponchos because I get in and out of the vehicle and you have to take a poncho off before sitting in the seat or you get the, your butt all wet so um, rain pants you don't get your butt wet Eh, get your mind out of the gutter. All right, um, I always carry in my backpack two of these. These are 55-gallon drum liners. These things are thick. Watch a sensible prepper for, you know, a 20-minute video on what this thing can do. But obviously, you can use it to keep, your dry, keep yourself dry. You can use it as a poncho, cut a hole in it, whatever you need. Uh, one thing that a lot of people overlook in their vehicles, especially truck drivers in their vehicles, is a wool blanket. Yeah, I have my wool blanket. I actually brought it with me today. My wool blanket has been used. That's why it has this giant hole in it. But that's okay. If I needed to, I'll just put my head through it and use it as a poncho. But wool will keep its insulation value, I think 70% of its insulation value, even when soaking wet. This is a U.S. military surplus. I don't remember where I got it. That's probably why it has the hole in it. No, I actually used it a lot, and that's how it got the hole in it. I don't know. I guess I am a rough sleeper, but whatever. Um, so, yeah. Uh, one thing I don't have with me are the, if you've ever seen, you can get them at Walmart, the little brake tab hand warmers. You can actually get ones that are about that big and they're called chest warmers. I always keep several of them in my backpack. Um, when camping, I take a few with me. If I'm camping in cold weather, I take a few with me because I can actually take one of those and ignite, or well, I guess not ignite, but activate it and toss it in the bottom of my sleeping bag. It warms up my sleeping bag like having a little heater in there. Uh, pro tip right there always always have proper clothing and what i said earlier is and, and this is going to be a little cynical but in 40 and 50 degree weather i've been seeing people wearing things like this a big heavy jacket or a nice jacket 
over top of their short shorts. They're usually female, and they are stupid. They are about the, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. That's not a judgment on my part. That's an observation. Yeah, I'm repenting for that one later, sorry. But, hey, it is what it is. Anyway, um, uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, underwear, I, I'm missing something here. I, I, oh, fire starters. Yeah, I've been over with fire starters. I keep several different fire starters. Um, I actually keep sticks of fat wood. The easiest fire starter, obviously, is the cotton ball with a Vaseline or petroleum jelly soaked in it. I take these. This is one cotton ball with petroleum jelly. It's really soaked, if you can kind of see the yellow tint in there. This is in one of the seal meal or vacuum sealed packages that you use for, like, food saver bags. That's what this is, and I have a bunch of these. I can actually take a lighter and light the edge of this, and it'll burn for a good five minutes. Or I can take it and rip it open if my lighter, for some reason, is wet, not working. I can hit it with a ferro rod. The spark will ignite it. Uh, sensible prepper also for these things, and like everybody else. Speaking of ferro rods, I keep one in the kit here, so yeah. Um, one day I'll go over the kit in detail. Also, if anyone would like to see all the stuff I keep in the 200 mile bag, just let me know in the comments and I'll do a whole bag overview at some point. Uh, I won't promise when I'll do it, but I'll get to it eventually. I found the things I was missing. Uh, uh, give me a second here. Wool socks, because um, if you don't carry, if you don't wear proper shoes, or you don't have snow boots for some reason, or any kind of insulated shoes, wool socks are the way to go. This I got at Costco. These are a 70% of wool blend, I think polyester. These are 100% wool. I keep these in the dry bag. These were in the dry bag. I don't know what happened to it. This is up. It's a Ziploc. I call it a dry bag. It, it works the same. Dry bag. You should always keep what you need to keep yourself warm in your vehicle have a kit put together most people don't spend as much time in their vehicles as i do or as any truck driver who lives in one like the guy sitting next to me he he lives in that truck and i have been there and done that for for more years than i'd like to remember um water you have to stay hydrated even even when it's cold you have to just look that up i'm not going to go into that much detail but yeah you you just have to keep yourself warm your core temperature and your lower regions mind out of the gutter but yeah that is the area that is actually where you lose most of your heat it's not from your head speaking of head i have my head covering here somewhere now i have i don't know where i put it now i got stuff thrown all over this truck because i was looking for stuff gloves and sorry about the squeaky <coughs> squeaky seat yeah i knew that was going to happen i'm sure that was loud for you and i apologize i've been meaning to fix it but i never got around to it but yeah, I, I have a head covering too. It's sitting around here somewhere. It's a whole face mask. It's one of the thermal ones, so it works a lot better than just your regular little cotton hat. Cotton hats are not the way to go. Cotton hats will get wet, and they will hold water and not keep their insulation. So if you're in the water, in the rain, or wet, heavy snow, cotton is not the way to go. So you don't want to do it. Now, a lot of people have problems with wool. They're, some people are actually allergic to it. Some people find it very itchy. Uh, sorry. Put something on before you put the wool over. Put your cotton on first, put the wool over top of it, I guess. I don't know. Put a plastic bag over yourself before you put the, the wool on. The wool is the best way to go. Uh, shelter making material. If you're as far away from home as I am, I always keep shelter making material. I always carry with me this. This is a Grand's First Brooks Small Forest Axe. I probably shouldn't be holding it up in this truck lot because I'm probably not supposed to have it here. Oh well, uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't. Anyway, I'm not caring. Yeah, and extra food, extra food. You always have extra food. I keep Mountain House in my thing. That one has seen better days. I I live in this truck. I eat lunch here. This is my lunch bag. I have lunch in it. So uh, yeah, I have a sandwich, and I actually have thrown a uh, extra what is it, the uh, instant oatmeal and stuff like that. I keep about a gallon of water in my bag, and yeah, just anything I need to get myself out of here, really, and keep myself warm in cold weather i can do it like i said proper proper this i was actually given this by the last company i worked for it's kind of like a carhartt but not really it's called burn yeah b-e-r-n-e -E. this thing works really well i didn't pay for it it's awesome last company i worked for gave it to me i'm, I'm happy uh, i don't work for them anymore because they just didn't pay me enough I, I really miss working for them but i had to have a job that paid more and that's why I'm here uh, communication equipment is also good your cell phone is one but if your cell phone fails you might need something else I have a I'm not going to detach but I have a bail fang radio sitting right there I have a CB here weather radio on both of them so I can definitely get live weather reports and yeah always 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 cup of coffee always yeah I'll drink it later but 
yeah, just keeping yourself warm is extremely important in weather like this. I'm glad he's out of there. Now you can really see the fog. Uh, it, I don't know if you can see the snow behind me or not, but it is snowing pretty good. It, and it has been since I got into Chicago. It was raining all the way to Chicago. So, uh, yeah, this kind of weather is just important to be able to stay warm and dry and i can't go over the importance of that enough um, i'm going to show you a, maybe a couple of clips here of what i drove through just on my way here flooded corn is just unbelievable i uh, posted in the grim survival facebook group is a private group you can ask to join anybody can join i hold the right to kick anybody out if they're being stupid keep that in mind don't be stupid um yeah so uh, grim survival facebook group we've been posting a lot more exclusive videos uh, my wife found a deal at Kroger meat was a dollar 99 a pound with an 89 cent off coupon per pound so we're buying and that was ground beef and that is just we haven't seen prices like that in years you think you'll run into me hope not but it wouldn't be the first time it's happened and my air horn don't work yeah it, it yeah he didn't even hear it so yeah air horns are no longer uh, it used to be illegal to not have an air horn in the truck, but they changed that law because of noise pollution. What's louder, my air horn or my truck smashing your car? I don't know. I'd like to hear the decibel level of each. But that's probably about it for me on this video. That is some of the winter gear I keep. I do have a few more things in here, but like I said, if you want to see a full review of my bag, just let me know. This video is running kind of long, and this truck's running kind of close, so I'm going to get off here and maybe go out there and tell him not to hit. Well, I think he's got it now, so maybe I won't have to. Um, yeah, that's, that's it for today. Remember, it's really grim out there. It is cold, it is snowy, and food shortages are coming, so uh, stock up, especially on your meat. But we'll have a video on that a little bit later um, a couple more videos coming down the line here really soon and yeah just let me know about the bag it's a 511 rush 72 it's big I got a lot of stuff in there weighs roughly 35 pounds I'm a little guy I don't I don't want to weigh it down I've seen people like Baron Dependent throw 70 pounds in their bag I'm not throwing 70 pounds in my bag I, I what would be the point I couldn't go that far with 70 pounds in my bag I'd get like a mile anyway that's enough I'm gonna stop rambling thank you for watching remember like subscribe share and hey check us out on Facebook if you want to see some of the exclusive content I've been posting and have a good one drive safe and don't be stupid